Good morning. I finally got on here. I apologize for the tardiness and the uh, lack of technology working this morning. Uh, I was trying to do Facebook Live from my computer. I was trying to do it from my phone. Things were just not working. There will not be a YouTube this morning because it is not currently working as well. So, <laughs> one of those mornings. Good to be with you. Hey, Linnell. We will keep on keeping on. I'll be right back. I'm gonna uh, give about five more minutes for folks. Well, maybe a little more for folks to hop on since we're getting on later than I wanted to, but I think it's working, so. We'll keep on plugging. I will be right back. Came on a little later, so we'll wait a little later as well. Good morning, Miss Joe. Good to be with you on this Memorial Day. Mm -mm -mm. It's a pretty one, thus far. Thought our rain was coming. I guess we maybe had a little bit in some parts of the county, but. We didn't have a ton at my house, if any, so. I know we usually start at 10. I had trouble getting on to Facebook Live and also trouble getting on to YouTube this morning, so it took me a minute to get in, so. We'll, uh, we'll wait a few more minutes. Or folks hop on. I told folks I'd probably be on around 10 15, so we'll wait just a little bit. It's good to be with y'all this morning. Hi, Marie. Good to be with you. Mm -mm -mm. says, do you want me to wake up, Charlie? Nah. Just let him rest. <laughs> I'll catch him up later. And good to be with you. Good to be with you. Mm -hmm. Our primary uh, scripture passage this morning, I'm going to jump away from Acts. We had been going in Acts. But I was just reading and I thought, you know what? Um, let's uh, let's just take a pause minute in the midst of this to hear from Jesus. And it's a familiar story that we'll hear. Um, but I just, I think we're going to go, yay! Praise God! Danny Corlude is home. Good morning, Kendall. Good to be with you. <laughs> Good to be with you. I'm so glad. <sighs> I feel like Danny has been in and out and all about, so I'm sure that he is 
glad to be home and y'all are glad as well. Mm -mm -mm. It's been a time, that's for sure. That's for sure. We are praising God for that this morning. For sure. We'll give a few more minutes since I said we're starting at 10.15 and then we'll, then we'll roll on. So. Uh, our scripture passage today, we'll be reading from Luke chapter 4. One through nine, and then thirteen through twenty. Mark four, one through nine. Actually, we're just going to go 1 through 20. We'll just do 20 verses. We'll see what happens. We're veering away from Acts this morning. We've been doing Acts, and we'll come back to it. Jared Fish, what are you doing? Good to be with you. Good to be with you on this Memorial Day. All right. I'll wait one more minute. Man, this waiting. It's weird when I'm sitting here on the screen and y'all are over there and and also with you. You're so Methodist, it's Jaron Fish. Oh Lord. All liturgical and stuff. Good morning, Ed. Good to be with you. Welcome on this beautiful Memorial Day morning y'all we have been talking about i'll just kind of intro us in we've been talking a lot about community and what it means to live into community and how the church is is a community um and how when you look within the word of community you find communion which is this deep sharing of life with one another and um, sharing of food, um, sharing of resource. And then you look at unity, which is a part of community. And uh, what that means is not always to agree or to have exactly uh, the same ways of doing or the same giftedness, but um, to be able to work together um, for common good and to be able to to join together in, in the unity of the, of the love of God uh, in Jesus and the way that they were connected. Um, and Jesus prayed before he headed out with his physical body. He prayed that, uh, that we, people who would seek to learn and to follow Jesus, um, would be one with each other as he is one, or one with the Father as he is one with the Father. Good morning, Joyce and Manny. Good to be with you. All kinds of people joining in today. So, 
Yeah, so we're still kind of on this thing of community, but in the middle of this study, I just was praying and I was reading and I think one of the things that is important for us uh, as we talk about community and as we are being formed and shaped into community that like, although we're a church and we're a body um, of people, of believers, of, of people trying to, trying to follow Jesus and to love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love other people with everything they are, um, we, uh, one of the things that I think is important for us to come back to and, uh, is to, to just examine our hearts, um, for the Jewish people, the center of, uh, their very being was their heart and not just the organ that pumps blood, but the soul, um, that they were more than just their physical bodies, that there was uh, a God-given being and personality and, and giftedness deep within who they were, and that was central to who they were. The heart is mentioned a lot in the Bible and actually more than the mind. Uh, however, we as people who are United Methodist people, we are a people who have a balance of heart and head, um, that we um, go with our gut and are led by the Spirit, but that we have been given a mind from God and that we are thinking people and uh, that we use sort of four various, I'm going to bring out the quadrilateral, ra quadrilateral, the Wesleyan quadrilateral for you all this morning. You probably never heard of that and or some of you have and you're like, really Micah, you're bringing that out? But we uh, typically... Uh, in the United Methodist tradition, in the Wesleyan tradition, we base um, our beliefs and actions on four primary things, and that is scripture, tradition, experience, and reason. And so uh, that really gives us a balance of our head and our heart. And, I, and really, we're people who are a balance of head, heart, and hands. That our hands, uh, that we are people who are active in ministry together. That we don't just sit back and, and learn stuff, but the, the things that God is showing and revealing to us through Scripture and our experience and through tradition and as we think through things, that, uh, that, that guides us into into using what we have and what God has given us. So let's hear from a parable from Jesus this morning. Uh, I just wanted to drop a parable in the middle of our community study because I do weird stuff like that. And I just thought uh, when we're talking about our hearts, right? And I might ask you that question. I'll ask you that question this morning. Where is your heart? I know I've been asking myself that question. It's been resonating in my mind and in my thoughts, but where is your heart? So we'll read our parable this morning, the story that Jesus comes. And Jesus often talked in stories and in parables, and he actually tells them why he talks in parables in the middle of this parable. So that'll be fun. We'll get to unpack that as well but he talks in stories he uses what people might know about to be able to help them hear and understand and take in um, his word so that it might not be a part of their very being but what I love about Jesus is he's so tenacious he will do whatever it takes to help people to know and understand and be uh, a part of his very nature. To uh, 
become one with Jesus, to become one with the Father. All right. Mark 4, 1 through 20. Good morning, Lucy. Good to be with you. We're starting from Mark 4. I'm dropping a parable in between this, and our question for the day is, where is your heart? Once again, Jesus began teaching by the lake shore. A very large crowd soon gathered around him. So he got into a boat. Then he sat in the boat while all the people remained on the shore. He taught them by telling many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seed. As he scattered it across his field, some of the seed fell on a footpath, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seed sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plant soon wilted under the hot sun, and since it didn't have deep roots, it died. Other seed fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants so they produced no grain. And still other seeds fell on fertile soil, and they sprouted and grew and produced a crop that was thirty, sixty, and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Then he said, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. So this first part that I read with you, good to be with you all who have joined in, this first part that I read with you from Mark chapter 4 is Jesus telling this story really about four kinds. Hello? Am I frozen, y'all? I'm not frozen on my end. Things seem to be working here. I don't know, Lucy. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. It may just be you. We'll see. But in, this, in these first nine verses, Jesus tells this parable about four different kinds of soil. And maybe you all have heard about it. But oftentimes, I think it's, it's framed as scattering the seeds. But it, it really is an emphasis on the soil the kind of the places in which, thanks, Jaron, the places in which the seeds are being planted. The environments in which the seeds are being planted. And he tells these disciples the story, and it, what's interesting is he, he goes out in this boat, so he kind of separates himself from everybody. He goes out in this boat in the water. Perfect. Thank you all. He goes out in the water in this boat, and he sits down, and then he begins to teach in these things, and he just begins to tell stories. It's story time with Jesus. <laughs> and he tells the story, and it, this story is particularly, it's more, I believe, about the soil than where there, than, than the scattering of the seed and, and the planting. So then in chapter 10, he come, or verse 10 of chapter 4 of Luke, he tells them why he teaches in stories or in parables. Later, when Jesus was alone with the twelve disciples and with the others who were gathered around, they asked him what the parables meant. He replied, You are permitted to understand the secret of the kingdom of God. But I use parables for everything I say to outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they see what I do, they will learn nothing. When they hear what I say, they will not understand. Otherwise, they will turn to me to be forgiven. Good deal. 
So he comes and he explains to the 12, he explains that these parables that he tells in stories, not, not necessarily for those who know him best, but for those who might come to know him. Last week, we talked about Pentecost, right? And Pentecost is the time where this, uh, the, the disciples, the people who follow Jesus, they're sitting and they're waiting for the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God comes upon them, and all of these people from all over the place who speak different languages are around them, and as the Spirit falls upon them, they are able to speak in a myriad of languages and do, speak in a way that they have never been able to speak before, and the Spirit comes in and busts down barriers and allows them to communicate, and what they're communicating in those various languages are about the goodness of God. And so I think Jesus comes and says, hey, this is one of the ways, by telling this story, this is one of the ways that barriers can be broken down and we can speak in the language that draws people closer into the love and into the light and into the character and nature of who God is. So parables, right? Like they're for these people uh, who are outsiders. Well, who are outsiders? Typically, you know, outsiders would be more of a, a beginning ministry to the Gentiles, but there were a lot of Jewish people that began to follow Jesus that were kind of, uh, law locked, and Jesus came to bring an ethic of love, and so, but he comes in this place, and he speaks in these, and tells them that, but they are for the outsiders, but they are also for the insiders, because I think ultimately, Jesus comes in this particular parable uh, as an examination of the heart, to begin to ask, where is your heart? Remember, I asked that question for y'all who were kind of here closer to the beginning. Where is your heart? Where is your heart? I, I don't know about you right now, and this is just kind of a side note, but uh, I've asked that question to me. Um, to myself, and yeah. Uh, my heart has been somewhat worn in the midst of this. Um, kind of trying to wonder and trying to find God in the midst of, of all of this stuff and trying to gain clarity. And, um, and I want to be, I want my heart to be rooted in the love of God, right? Like if it's not, if it's rooted in anything, I want it to be rooted in the love of God. And I think... Like, there are so many things that pull upon our heart. Um, we being human people, people of the flesh, but also a people who are guided by the Spirit, it is oftentimes we become very fleshy and we get pulled, right? Like, we get pulled in different places. And uh, I think sometimes uh, it is my hope that I could be, like, not completely centered but centered right like that my heart would be grounded in the love of God because if my heart's grounded in the love of God then the heart is grounded for the love for God's people and I don't get swayed by all the things that are pulling me in directions I may get pulled but I'm getting pulled right back by the heart of God so he explains why he teaches in parables, which this parable is so much uh, for the examination of hearts, but he teaches it so that we could all be examiners of our hearts. But then he goes on in verse 13, right? Chapter 4, verse 13, and he explains this particular parable, right? Of four different kinds of soils. He says, then Jesus said to them, if you can't understand the meaning of this parable, how will you understand all other parables? This is a parable that kind of sets the tone. It sort of is the foundational story. If you can't understand this story, then how in the world are you going to understand the rest of the stories? So he explains it. The farmer plants seed by taking God's word to others. 
Okay. That's pretty 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 ex a good explanation. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. So when you plant seeds upon the footpath, there's really not a lot of soil. It's very thin. It doesn't uh, take root, and so it just kind of comes and blows away. And that is those who hear it, um, but only only for Satan to come and have it taken away. They're not deeply rooted. That This different kind of wind comes and sweeps away the seed. What's interesting is it's still heard, but nothing really happens with the word that has been given to them. Uh, many of us at times, and maybe in our lives, and I think even in our churches, right? We come and we want to hear a word, but it just, that's, that's as far as it goes with us. And as we get swayed, we hear this word um, from God, or we, we dive into our Bible, and so it's good we take it in, but we don't really take it in, right? Like, it comes, uh, it, it only comes so far into us. It doesn't go into the storehouse, into our hearts. It's like, okay, yeah, it's like the surface level thing that we get. So then Jesus says, the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. So this one is heard, right? The word is heard and it's received and taken in and people are like, yes, this is awesome. I almost look at this particular uh, seed and planting among the rocky soil as uh, us who come every week, uh, not that we're not trying to receive and to get our feel, but we only come and we come to the gas station uh, and we fill up and we get our gas but then we don't go and drive around and use our gas, right? The reason you would get gas in your car is not to come park your car back at your house, <laughs> right? So it's us who go and we get our fill up and it feels good and it feels good in our tank, but it sits in our tank and nothing happens with it. And then you know, by the time it sits there long enough, you know, um, problems begin to happen, things begin to happen, and at that point, um, it fades away. I don't know if that metaphor or that illustration was the greatest, but, but it's this place in which we come, we get our feel, we're, we receive it, we think, man, yes, God is awesome. But then when things get rough or things get tough, or things don't even get rough or tough, right? Um, things are just not at the at the peak, and things are not necessarily at the valley. But maybe there's things happening in between, and it's just like, man, it's just boring and monotonous. And it's like, ugh. When things get hard, or you're persecuted, or or things get difficult, it just kind of fades away. So that's kind of our second soil is the rocky soil. The first is like dust, right? Minimal soil by the road. The second one is like rocky soil. And then the third is this. The seed that fell among the thorns represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of life, the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things so no fruit is produced. I might say that a majority of us people fall into this place often. A people planted among thorns. So people hear God's word, but we're crowded out by the worries of life, 
And what are the worries of life? All of these voices, right, that are coming from all over the place. I might even just venture to say the news or even that voice of evil that continues to speak into our hearts that draws us away from love and draws us into only our opinion, that draws us into our individualistic self and only what we need rather than what the whole people need. We're lured with scarcity and we feel like we just need to grab on and grasp a hold of whatever we can when really it's about the soil that we've been planted in and we just haven't planted it in a soil that is stable, that is firm, that is fertile. I mean, right now, like there's a lot that's pulling at us and there are a lot of various and different opinions on things. And I don't know that we necessarily have to agree on the solution fully because we'll have to figure out some sort of solution together. We'll have to figure out how we continue to be the people of God, the people who receive God's word during this time and the people who continue to live it out in the world. But we do have to agree that there's a problem. And I don't mean like, okay, like you got problems. I mean, yeah, we all got problems. But what I mean is, is that like, maybe, just maybe, the collectiveness of us, of people who follow God and the collectiveness who are tr trying to figure out what to do during this season, uh, maybe, just maybe, um, we can ask that question, where is our heart? if we have a heart bent toward God and we're seeking to be planted in some soil this so we'll look, we'll look we saw the thorny soil right it doesn't produce anything because it's all just it's squandered out by thorns it's being poked all the time yeah Marie Yeah, so take a look at Marie's comments. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm kind of pausing and looking at that and trying to keep us going. But, yeah, like, incredible stuff. But this parable is, is absolutely incredible. So then let's look at this last parable, okay, or this last one. The seed that fell on the good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, even 100 times as much has been planted. Y'all, I think it's all about the soil. <laughs> we sometimes think it's about the plant. Or it's about the seed. Or it's even about uh, the one who sows the seed. But I think this draws us to the soil. And being a gardener myself, I, there's a lot that I have learned about soil that uh, specific pH and specific uh, so pH is like the acidity content of the soil and there's an importance of the soil if you don't have good soil you don't have anything if it's too rocky if it doesn't have the right acidity or pH if it's not fertilized well if it's too much like clay it the roots can't really settle in there it's all about the soil and later on in in mark it's actually as it continues on there's another story about soil and it's mark i think it's 4 37 now 27 maybe It's somewhere in here. I'll have to look it up particularly. I can't find it, but it says, um, that essentially the seed is planted and it allows the soil to do the work. I'm gonna stop there. I know this has kind of been short, but I'm gonna stop there and I'm gonna leave you with a question or just a statement. Like, if 
First of all, I invite you this week to ask, where is your heart? And to reflect on these four different places in Mark and think about how you're impacted. And, and then also, like, just invite you into being a people who are planted in good soil. Jesus speaks in his Sermon on the Mount, and he says, where your heart is, there also is your treasure. What are you treasuring right now? Is it the love of God? Are you treasuring the love that God has for you? Are you planted in good soil? Are there things, is it, is it so, is your joy so easily taken from you? Good morning, Rachel Scott Green. We're kind of ending up, but go back and I'm, I'm ending early, but this has been pretty good stuff. So check it out. Go back and listen when you can. What kind of what kind of soil are you planted in? Are there thorns that are poking at you that are really blocking your vision and your foundation? And are you really allowing the soil to do its work in your life? I think sometimes we want to try and manipulate and try and make the decisions and we think that we have all the right answers and that we are so certain. Um, but we, we are not. We, we don't have all the answers. We look to the one who has all the answers. We do not claim to have all the answers. God doesn't come in Jesus with that kind of arrogance. Even Jesus, right? say that I have all the answers. He has the no, but he offers uh, with great love. And yes, his grace uh, comes to us and it is freely given. And yes, there is some responsibility that comes in and through that grace. There is demand that comes with it. But are we speaking from the soil? Are our nutrients that we receive from the soil, are they coming out into our leaves and into our flowers? Are they a part of our very being and every single part of us? Are we getting good nutritious vegetables, <laughs> good nutrition, some vitamins and minerals from the soil? Are we eating good food or are we just eating fast food that only sticks with us temporarily and really doesn't keep us healthy? Where is your heart? Because our hearts guide how we treat one another, how we live in community with one another. And our individual hearts are really not individual. There's this thing called companion planning. It's where you plant things that don't take away from other people's, from other nutrients in the soil. You plant plants that help complement one another beside each other in the garden. So maybe we be a people who plant in companion planting. And that ultimately that we see that the soil is not just our soil. Like one individual person. Like the plant doesn't just take in from one. That we are a community of people. And that yes... Doing our individual work on our hearts is important, but our hearts are connected in a collective way.
May we be a people of healthy hearts, sound minds, and may we be a collective heart, and may our heart be beat as one. Not that we have the same opinions, not that we think exactly alike, but that we love each other well and that our hearts are pouring in and, and loving God with everything that we have. If we love God with everything that we have, then we'll love each other with everything that we have and we'll keep doing stuff. We'll keep carrying out this mission of God in the world and people will experience saving grace and salvation will be right here and people will be drawn even ourselves will be drawn to repentance to turn the other way to find healing and wholeness where are you planted where's your heart how might you let the soil do the work May it be so. Love y'all. Thankful for y'all. In the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, may we just say amen. Let's pray. Um, I invite you to go back and look at this parable. I invite you to look at what Marie is uh, written because, man, she has given us a great reflection this morning on this parable. I'm going to go back and do some reading on it. Um, we don't just do these studies so that I can bring you something and you can fill up and then never think about it again. We do these studies so that you can go and chew on this scripture. So I invite you to go look at Mark 4 verses 1 through 20 and maybe read through some more of, of Jesus' stories. Okay? I love y'all. If y'all need anything, you holler at me. Uh, I, hopefully you guys are able to do a little bit of resting and relaxing and I, I think you know we've been doing a lot of that some of us who've been quarantined but I, I would invite you to to rest and relax your mind and your heart not just your bodies so uh, do that I love y'all let's say a prayer I'll pray real quick and then we'll get on with our day and if you need anything holler love y'all Loving God, we thank you that that is your character and your nature. We thank you uh, for your words this morning in Scripture that remind us and ask us uh, the question of where our heart is. Lord, I pray that we would be a collective people with hearts bent towards you, that we would experience your love and that we would pour out your love that we would not try to play God or be our own soil or manufacture it, but that you would be our soil that would be fertile for us, that would be healthy, that would give us the good stuff that we need to be able to produce fruit. Lord, I ask that, uh, I pray that we would be companion planters, that we would uh, be planted by one another, not being the same kind of seed, the same kind of plant, having different fruits and gifts and things that stem from us, but that we would share the soil together. That we wouldn't combat or be a people who fight against one another, Lord. That we would be a people who would join together and be united. so that we could individually and collectively as a group proclaim the goodness of your love, the freedom of your salvation, the joy that comes with knowing you and knowing your son Jesus, and the knowledge and the experience of the spirit who works through us. Join our hearts. Remind people that we are still together. Remind people that the church is not closed. And it will never be closed because not even the gates of hell will prevail against it. That your ministry and your mission continue. 
that your love never ends and there is nothing that can separate us from it. I thank you for each and every person with us this morning, those who are not with us, those who are a part of Lambeth and connected in some form or fashion. And I pray that they sense and know your love and your spirit and hopefully that they experience it through this community. Bend our hearts towards you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love y'all. Have a good one. We will talk with y'all soon. Praying with and for all of you all. Uh, and giving thanks to God for uh, the joys in your life as well. If you need anything, holler at me. I'll talk to you later.